And good morning to you. No need to apologize. I would be the last one to throw stones at uh, getting names wrong. So <laughs> I had you backwards. So my apologies there. Uh, you are the okay. ch- you are the chairman of the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee, and you folks have been in the news a bit lately. Would be a safe statement, I think, to make here. Uh, this is in regards to the nomination of names to fill the vacated seat when Claire Ath moved out of Jefferson County and had to resign her seat. So uh, I understand that there have been some lawsuits filed. If that's indeed uh, something that's already gone through and, and is, a, is a fact, uh, whatever you can't comment on, feel free to let us know. We're not trying to drag you into any issues that will get you into any kind of situations, if that's fair to you, sir. No, no, completely understood. And, and I would agree the Jefferson County Executive Committee really is not an organization that should spend much time in the news. Uh, And we certainly don't wear that as a badge of honor that the contention uh, within the county that has been going on uh, has been borne out in that fashion. Uh, We are, uh, there is a lawsuit. Uh, We are taking on the lawsuit. And, uh, you know, we think it's, we personally think it's a a bit bogus and we're defending it in court. So the lawsuit, and I guess uh, to go back to the beginning of this, after Claire resigned, uh, you folks were tasked with putting up three names that could be considered by the Jefferson County Commission to replace Claire Ath. There is at least a, a complaint by one of the commissioners, Jennifer Krause, that the names, as they were uh, nominated, did not follow the code or the guidelines as to how these names should have been presented. Can you take us through what the code is and, and, and how these names were indeed nominated? Well, certainly. So I, I think the first step, it, it, it really needs to be noted that when the vacancy first appeared and was posted, that any citizen of the county had the ability to apply for the vacancy. And in fact, many did. Uh, and what, what happened was is that the commission deadlocked on two of the two candidates, uh, two of the two of, of, of the final two candidates. Uh, and when that happens, it moves on to the next phase, which actually rarely occurs. Uh, and it's outlined in West Virginia Code that basically the executive committee for whoever the party of the vacating position is has to select three people to then submit to the county commission. Um, for that process, there's no official timetable for that. Um, but we, as a, the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee, held a meeting in order to discuss how we would make these selections Uh, there i mean to note there isn't a process outlined in uh, west virginia code or executive committee bylaw Uh, and so we decided as a committee to follow the process that the state executive committee bylaws use when there's legislative vacancies uh, as we thought that this was probably the most applicable process that was spelled out um which, by the way, none of our meetings were held in secret. Uh, they were all open to all registered Republicans, including the one where we took the vote. Uh, and in fact, we even opened it up uh, to uh, the registered Republicans that were there for any comment. Uh, we took a voice, voice vote, which has been uh, a little bit of the, the question here, but we took a vo- voice vote to follow the process that our nominations would result from the election process. Uh, The process was a runoff style. Uh, That's what they use in the legislature uh, for the legislature. And everyone agreed and approved uh, to this on the executive committee, both before and after the process. So once that happens, we send those names over the county over to the county commission. And then they have 15 days to choose one of the candidates. And if that as soon as that 15 days goes by. Uh, they have they're supposed to uh, by state code go through a process of elimination whereby the most senior county commissioner uh, gets to remove one and then down the line bill Stephen, uh been a past county commissioner i have not experienced anything like this to me it appears to be fairly cut and dry uh procedures are in place by code what you should do what went south in this whole process? Well, that, that's, that's a good question. Uh, it started to go south early on, right after we submitted the names 
that we had one county commissioner and, well, two county commissioners working together to basically say that one of the candidates that we had pushed forward was not a legal candidate. Uh, they said they had an ethics opinion uh, that stated that this uh, candidate was not a legal candidate. And it, it turned out to not be true. There was no ethics opinion on this candidate. Uh, it was a broad-based ethics opinion that basically said if an individual has a certain amount of a conflict of interest, they may not be applicable to a position and should should not you know be an elected official in part of that. So the candidate went and sought his own uh, opinion from the Ethics Commission, and the Ethics Commission ruled in his favor that there was not uh, enough of uh, you know of a of a conflict that he could not recuse himself from which the candidate uh had committed to recusing himself on anything that would cover anything that would be a conflict of interest for his organization um and and then it moved on uh but they still it, it it's what it's been a moving goalpost for the reasons why the county commission have denied quorums that was initially the case once the ethics commission officially cleared that up, uh, there seems to be other reasons why uh, the county commissioners are deciding not to show up and hold a quorum. Um, uh, obviously, it started with uh, their their contentions with the candidate with one of the candidates. Uh, then it moved to being denied agenda items. Uh, then it moved to uh, the chair needed to resign from the county commission. So it's been sort of a moving goalpost. It doesn't, it, 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 it's, it's hard to determine exactly what it is, uh, but it, it, it certainly doesn't really appear to be ideologically driven. It seems to be, uh, you know, multiple reasons why it could be, and we could all speculate as to what is driving this behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, I'm going to speculate just a second, uh, Stephen. And I obviously I'm in the next, the the, uh, the Jason County. I do not know this up close and personal, so my thought is sheer speculation. Uh, it's uh, it's my understanding that the procedure is that uh, that. The senior most person could strike one. That would be Jane Tab. Then the second senior most person would strike another the name, uh, which would be right now some confusion. Or they're not confusion. Both Steve Stolliper and uh, and uh, Jackson are both uh, came in the same time, so they hold the comparable uh, seniority. So they would strike another one, and then the remaining person would be the person that would be seated. Uh, the problem that I'm seeing, I'm speculating now, is that there. There is some concern that if Steve Stolliper was the the power that struck the second name, then there would be a the individual would be seated would be one that would run counter to what Kraus and Jackson want. I I I uh, uh, on I think here economics come in and the solar panel feel comes into play. Is there any, is there how much speculation, how much element of truth of uh, this scenario that I just mentioned? Well, I think that there's some elements to truth to what you're saying. Uh, I, I think the complexities to that are that there, there certainly are certain factions that seem to want a specific candidate. Um, and because of that, they're not willing to bend on 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 uh, letting m meetings move forward. Uh, what I would say is they need to let the process play out. According to law, they need to let the process play out and see where it stands. Um, personally, uh, when it comes to any of these things, there are legal ways in which we go about making changes uh, within our county. Uh, to to how businesses are run, what businesses can run, uh, how we shape zoning. And I think that those processes need to play out in their official capacities, uh, not in a way of if if I'm not going to get what I want right now, I'm just I'm going to hold the ball and, and go home. 
Is the reaction of the county residents uh, supportive of one side or the other, or is it split down the middle? Uh, where's the uh, uh, where's the uproar that I would have anticipated that would happen in the county? Well, it's 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 always hard to say uh, if there's an uproar or what that uproar is. The the very small vocal minority uh, always tends to uh, cut most of the air in the room. And that's why they probably need to go back and have some public discourse on this. And there's an official process for that uh, in which the public can communicate with the county. And it's part of the official process of what's going to go on if you're going to get things rezoned. And so if that is the case, there should it, it should be officially done in the way, uh, you know, that, that we have outlined through code and through law uh, in order to address these issues. Uh, social media is not really a an accurate place to take an accounting of what's what's going on in the community it, because we have these processes built in for addressing these things. Have you had a conversation? We're talking, by the way, with Stephen Roberts, chairman of the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. Have you had conversations with Commissioners Kraus and Jackson since this whole brouhaha began? Uh, I did attempt to have a conversation. I've attempted to have conversations with all of them uh, right after I was elected as the chair of the executive committee. I've reached out to everyone uh, trying to get in the room and have meetings with them. Uh, I, I have not had those opportunities. They've declined to meet uh, and have any conversations at all. I did uh, have one opportunity to meet with Commissioner Kraus. Uh, that got to be a much maligned public uh, event where I was accused of uh, of basically cornering her over a political thing at a birthday party. But I tried to sit down and, and have a conversation with her so that we could gain uh, some sort of, of trust and have a conversation. But it, it was it seemed evident that uh, there not all parties are interested. Uh, and having a conversation about things and seeing where we can work things out. Stephen, the, uh, my understanding of the process is that you as executive committee have done your job. Now the ball is shifted strictly to the county commission. Why are you folks still involved, at least in the, uh, uh, the underlying discussion? Well, we shouldn't be. It's, it's just that we, uh, the county, a uh, couple of the county commissioners, uh, have continued to say that the executive committee has not done their job. And that being the basis point for them uh, not doing theirs. Uh, so uh, it's a contention that we disagree with completely. Uh, obviously, there is a couple of court cases that we are already filing to defend that will uh, clear those things out. But we have done our job. And regardless of there being court cases, uh, civil court cases on this, it does not uh, resolve the fact that they have to do their jobs uh, with the law that says this this. Uh, commissioner shall be seated, right? There's no, uh, there's no wiggle room there that the timelines have already passed for what the law has said needs to be done. So technically the executive committee should not be involved at all at this point. The county commission has no oversight on what political parties do and how they make their decisions. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's sort of moved into an area right now where uh, there is no outline of process because they're uh, that you know we have already done their job and it's and it's just now becoming a public argument uh, as a as a methodology for uh, for for their personal behaviors you mentioned a couple of court cases i'm familiar with one where it's been challenged you, sh you did it in a, a voice vote you should have done it another way and i've forgotten exactly what the specifics are uh, what was the second court case well, it's it's technically the same one. Uh, it it came from the same uh, same litigator uh, that uh, we did not send them the meeting minutes when they requested, uh, which is outlined in our bylaws that the bylaws have to be open to inspection to all registered Republicans. That doesn't mean that we have to send them all of our meeting minutes. Uh, and in this case, uh, it 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 would actually served uh, to potentially be harmful to do so to the executive committee because, um, you know, the the parties 
uh, the litigating parties have a tendency to post anything and everything publicly uh, as as an attack method. So uh, we, you know, that's a part of it. Um, the voice vote thing is another interesting uh, interesting piece because we quote state code, and in our in our bylaws, there is a direct quote and a direct reference to West Virginia code on voice vote, which ironically are that's just what our section of the bylaws are is what the West Virginia code is. We have not updated the quote within our bylaws, but the quote uh, in the state bylaws has actually removed the need for a voice vote. But the reality is, is it's irrelevant because we had a voice vote to do the process uh, that we implemented and to come up with the individuals that we did. Okay. Is it uh, based upon what you've said and kind of reinforces what my somewhat limited knowledge is uh, that the uh, that the executive committee has done their job, passed it on to the county commission. But a couple of the county commissioners are using the executive committee as an excuse not to take any action. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. And it, it stems from that line on uh, one, I think it's Commissioner Krause's social media page uh, about the voice vote and that it was a because of that violation they refused to recognize the candidates because it was an illegal nomination process and we checked with d kersey legal counsel at the secretary of state's office about that objection and he disagreed with the objection that it was a valid objection as a reason to not seat the fifth commissioner in jefferson county so that was his legal opinion on it at this point, do you have any updates as to what's happening next in Jefferson County, Robert? Well, I, I, I guess we'll wait and see if, if the commissioners plan to attend on Thursday. Um, we will see. Uh, you know, if, if not, uh, there's, you know, obviously other processes uh, that are available to uh, the community. Uh, but as the executive committee, you know, we, you know, we feel our job has been has been done and that we did what we were supposed to do uh in in giving three names yeah, and hey. by the way my apologies again because i yeah. called you by your last name i said your first name steven sorry that's all, yeah. right. That's all right yeah uh steven it appears that uh one of the uh flies in the ointment here is who would be the second most senior county commissioner how would that be resolved well i that i think that it would need to be played out to see, I mean, there's certainly the possibility that the um, uh, that the senior county commissioner makes a vote, and that the next county commissioner, one of them, recuses themselves from making a vote uh, on on who is eliminated. So that is one way it could be done. I've I've talked, uh, I've mentioned this to uh, you know at least one of the county commissioners who would talk with me and it's it's certainly a potential so i don't i don't think that it's as unresolvable as people think that it will be i i actually think that that part of the process uh will actually complete itself pretty rapidly well from the outside looking in i would i guess i disagree with you with at least your optimism uh if it does center on what i've been told about the the placement of the large solar field with one of the commissioners being very much supportive of it and the other the two commissioners in question being against it to me the whole issue would be how the second commissioner that would have the the ability to mark through a name would be determined i i i think that is really a sticking point yeah, I think the, you know, the placement of the large solar field is already done, right? Like there, there, there is, they have already gotten approval through the county for construction. If you drive by there, you'll you'll see that there are already tons of solar panels out there. They're, they are not uh, contending to stop work on any solar fields uh, that have already been approved. Uh, the contention is is now that these solar fields are observable and there is some blowback at seeing solar fields that uh, they, you know, what their real efforts are is stopping future ones from taking place. Mm -hmm. And again, if, if the community 
once that there's a process for us to go through uh, to implement that and, and, and should be done. The community needs to be heard. Um, but I, I, I tend to believe that they need to play out the process uh, and see how, uh, see how it plays out. Uh, I don't know exactly what will happen, but, but I have some ideas that I think would actually, uh, it would actually move along pretty quickly once they're, uh, they got to, uh, uh, re- reducing candidates. Stephen, only a couple of seconds here, literally left. Uh, how many commission seats are up in the next election? I believe there are two. I mean, I, don't quote me on that. I'm okay. going to have to go check, but I believe there are two. I appreciate your input today, Stephen. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, a good insight here today. It's very enlightening. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, sir. Stephen Roberts he is the chairman of the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee and